Welcome to the ducted fan practical as part of the fundamentals of fluid mechanics. The aim of this prac is to investigate the performance of the axial fan. This video will cover the experimental setup, the software package, how to conduct the experiment, and then what is required for the final report. To start off, we'll discuss about the experimental setup. This is the orifice plate and is used at the inlet of the duct. This is the pressure sensor, which is used with the atmospheric pressure to measure the flow rate at the inlet of the duct. This is the thermal couple, which senses the temperature of air inside the duct and is used to calculate the density of the air. This is an air straightener. So when the air comes into the tube, it's very turbulent. So this straightens out the air. The air then goes through the actual fan and out the other end of the tube. These are two pressure sensors, which measure the difference in pressure over the fan. And this sensor here measures the frequency of the fan. And finally, at the end of the duct, we have an aperture device that changes the diameter of the outlet. Now we'll have a look at how to operate the software package. To start, you need to open the program. To find it, Go to Start, All Programs, Arm Field Capture Software, and the program should be the first one on the list called Axial Fan. When the program initially opens, the screen should look like this and have a set of instructions. If you still need help after this video, have a read. Otherwise, click on this icon to continue. Once you have clicked on the icon, the setup that's on the table should be displayed on the screen. On the left hand side, there is a number of different parameters that can be set. The first one is the sample number. It records how many sets of data have been taken. It says one because we haven't recorded anything yet, and this will be our first set. The next field down is the atmospheric pressure. Click on the field to edit. To acquire the atmospheric pressure at UQ, Google UQ weather, then click the first link. Use this value for atmospheric pressure. The field requires a reading in kilopascals, so this value needs to be changed from hectopascals to kilopascals. This field is the orifice plate setting, which you will not need to modify since it should already have been set correctly. These are the fan and slow rate, which are modified once the fan is turned on, so you do not have to worry about these. This setting changes whenever the fan is on or off. When you click it, the value will turn to 1 to show that the fan is turned on. Then finally, this setting changes the speed of the fan as a percentage. During this experiment, you will set this fan to 30, 50 or 100%. The diagram shows the four values being recorded. The first one records the temperature by the temperature sensor in the duct. The next one is the power of the motor. The third one shows the pressure variation across the fan. And the final reading shows the pressure just downstream of the orifice placed, which is used with the atmospheric pressure to determine the initial flow rate of the duct. Then finally, these two buttons zero the readings for pressure and must be zeroed before changing the fan speed of the duct. Now I will walk you through how to conduct the experiment. To start, zero these values. Now turn on the fan at the speed that you want and observe that this pressure changes. Once this pressure stabilizes, press the go button to record the data. Once you press go, you can press this icon, which will take you to this Excel document. You will have a sample number one and data recorded for the diameter fully open and for a fan speed of 30. Now that you have your first sample recorded, go back to the main page and turn the fan off. To collect your next sample for the fan speed, you must change the diameter of the aperture at the outlet of the device. Here we are with the aperture. The aperture changes the diameter of the outlet from this large to this small. Never change the diameter to smaller than 5 millimeters, as the fan will have no resistance and will burn out. For this experiment, you will have to take 10 readings 
between this diameter and this diameter. So for the second reading, change your diameter slightly and tighten with these. Now back on the computer, turn the fan on, wait for the pressure to stabilize, press go, and then check your data in the Excel spreadsheet. Repeat this process for 10 different diameters of the aperture device. Once you have recorded 10 different diameters for the first fan speed, change the diameter to fully open. Then change the fan speed to 50, zero these two values, turn the fan on, wait for the pressure to stabilize again, then press go to record the readings. By the end of this experiment, you should have 10 samples for the low fan speed of 30%, the medium fan speed of 50%, and the full fan speed of 100%, making a total of 30 samples. You can now save and email this Excel spreadsheet to everyone that helped to complete the prac. Using these 30 data points, you are required to create two graphs for the report. The first one is simply the fan performance, which is change in pressure versus the flow rate and can be completed at home. The second graph is non-dimensional and must be completed in the practical so that the second part of the experiment can be completed. The second graph is non-dimensional, which means we need to get rid of the units for pressure and flow rate. To do this, we need to use these two equations, psi and thi, which represent the head coefficient and the flow coefficient. Before calculating the coefficients, you must remember to change the frequency and flow rate to the correct units. The frequency of the fan is given in RPM and you must change it to Hertz. And the flow rate is given in liters per second and you must change this to meters cubed per second. Once changed, the head coefficient and flow coefficient can now be calculated. Head coefficient psi is equal to the change in pressure over the density multiplied by the frequency squared and the diameter squared where the diameter is always 123 millimeters. The flow coefficient phi is equal to the flow rate divided by the frequency multiplied by the diameter cubed where the diameter is always 123 millimeters the same as the head coefficient. Once these values have been calculated for each data point, the head coefficient must be graphed against the flow coefficient, as shown in the practical handout. You can see that there is a linear distribution. You must then draw a line of best fit for this graph. Once you have found this line, you then can continue on to the next part of the experiment. The second part of the experiment is to complete this table that is given to you in the practical handout. To fill in this table, you must pick three values for flow coefficient, and using the line of best fit, find the corresponding values for the head coefficient. Then fill these values into this table. Now you select some random fan percentage, for example, 80%. Type this into the program, turn on the fan, then find the frequency of the fan. The frequency for the fan will be given in RPM and you must convert this to Hertz. Once you have this frequency, you can calculate the flow rate and the change in pressure using the head coefficient equation and the flow coefficient equation using these values you found. You can then put the flow rate and the change in pressure into this table. Now select a flow rate that you have just calculated. Now go back to the software package and input your fan speed percentage. In this example, we are using a fan speed of 80%. Zero these two values and turn the fan on. Now go to the aperture at the end of the tube and change the diameter until the flow rate on the software package matches the flow rate that you have just selected and record the change in pressure. 
Do this for all three values of flow rates. Once you have found the three changes in pressure, you can record them in these cells of the table. Using these results, you can then find the percentage error between your predicted values for change in pressure and your results for change in pressure. That is the practical complete. Now I will walk you through what is required for the report. The report must include the two graphs that we have spoken about in this video. Namely, the fan performance, which is change in pressure on the flow rate, and the non-dimensional graph, which is the head coefficient on the flow coefficient. You must also include the table that we have completed. Then describe and analyze everything and produce an error analysis for table 2. The report must include the following. A cover page, summary, background theory, aims and objectives, scope, assumptions, procedure, results and discussions, conclusions, references and appendices. The report is then due 10 working days after the completion of the practical. That concludes this instructional video on how to complete the ducted fan practical. If you would like to rewatch a particular section, you can click on one of these links that are provided on the screen. If you need further help, you can also ask a tutor. Otherwise, good luck with your experiments, and I hope you can figure it out.